Peter Hill Explains, where I invite you to join the science teaching conversation with me about gene drives. Uh, these are perhaps the most scary genetic engineering that's ever been contemplated. So a gene drive inserts into your gene a a gene which um, genetically engineers yourself. So you actually get a gene for genetic engineering yourself. And so uh, what this means is that uh, uh, that genetic piece of code translates into both your genes and uh, all your children uh, pick up the gene. They must pick up, you know, Normally they have a 50% chance of picking up, but they've got a 100% chance. And uh, that gene then hops onto the... Uh, they get two copies the, uh, of uh, the DNA. And that same gene copies itself onto the next gene. And very soon you spread this uh, code throughout in the entire population. So I don't know quite how that... Uh, results, but uh, you can actually just destroy a whole species, wipe out a whole species. So we've got this genetic information which can actually destroy an entire species. So if there's a species of insect we don't like, or any sort of species, we can just put a gene drive into it and uh, destroy it. You can see that up. Uh, breathing, but it's absolutely bitterly cold here, out here, probably minus two degrees or something like that at the moment. I shudder to think what it is. So um, I want to uh, give you a bit of a background on uh, what this gene drive is. So it's something to, uh, you know, I find actually quite terrifying to think about, but it's also something to actually discuss. Uh, and go through all the little bits and pieces of you. Uh, so your uh, DNA, you've got DNA on the left hand side of the page and on the right hand side of the page at the end of it you've got the other things that make you uh, who you are. You've got uh, a trillion, so well, I think 27 trillion cells in you. Pretty amazing number of cells, more cells in you than stars in our galaxy. By a fair amount, but um, uh, those cells, each of those cells has got in it some uh, water, some a double layer of fat on the outside, uh, so uh, it's sort of got a membrane on the outside, it's oily in the middle of the membrane, on the outside of the membrane it's water attractant, so it can actually slip into water and have water inside it. It's got nanotubules in it. This is lots of proteins, bits of fat and stuff like that. And uh, uh, you've got to go from uh, DNA into uh, producing all those structures. And uh, so it goes like this. Um, the DNA is copied into something called uh, RNA, ribonucleic acid, so D is dioxynucleic acid, and uh, you've got the DNA, and it uh, produces a copy of RNA. RNA is not double stranded, and so it comes off and it actually can fold off up into sort of primitive machines, and then um, uh, you can fold into machines, but it also can uh, fold into uh, uh, bits of code. So those codes at the RNA stage, uh, RNA forms a series of primitive machines, and uh, the uh, oh, sorry, uh, the RNA also uh, forms the code. And these primitive machines, the RNA machines, with the RNA code, then build the proteins. So you've got DNA makes RNA. RNA is a combination of just DNA is pure information. Uh, RNA is a combination point between information and machine. And then um, 
uh, the RNA encodes to make proteins, and we'll go into what a protein is. So a protein is basically a polymer. This is a linked chain, so if you can imagine a uh, troll beads or a Pandora beads, uh, you've got uh, basically uh, 20 uh, things, 20 amino acids can be coded with um, three sequences of DNA, of three uh, code bits for DNA corresponds to 64 components, which with redundancy corresponds to 20 amino acids, and the uh, sequence of amino acids, the uh, amine locks to the acid uh, with casting off of water, and it does that over and over again to form a protein. So it goes from information, information in machines, to pure machines, and then the machines make stuff like uh, the fats and the uh, bits to make their DNA and the RNA and the, the machines. Uh, so it goes from information, information machines, machines that make the bits. That little circle makes your entire cell. So the key to it is your uh, DNA. Now your DNA is information. How much information does it take to make you up as a person? Well, uh, the answer is three gigabytes. And nowadays, sort of like when I was uh, in the 80s, three gigabytes was just unthinkable. A gigabyte was just an unthinkable quantity of information. And uh, I remember you used to get to a 20 megabyte hard drive, if you're lucky. And uh, I remember going to a... Uh, a uh, industry meeting and uh, someone held out a USB stick and he went, whoa, like that. Um, so th three gigabytes is not much by our standards. You'd, uh, uh, you wouldn't have a phone with three gigabytes of information. You'd want to get several gigabytes per week or, you know, in your phone plan. So we now are in an information rich age. And three gigabytes is um, some information. I think uh, there's something like 20,000 genes. I can't remember. A gene uh, codes for a protein. And there's a bit more to it. So uh, the DNA is... Uh, sorry, uh, your DNA contains all the information. And there's three gigabytes of it. And... Uh, it's basically a couple of molecules wide, but in each of your 27 trillion cells, or 24.7, I can't remember, it's just off the top of my head, cells uh, contain um, two meters of uh, DNA. And uh, that two meters uh, of that DNA in each of your cell is basically it's one metre from your mum and one metre from your dad. And uh, your uh, that one metre from your dad is a mix, a, a spliced up mix of your grandmum and your granddad. So you're really a product of uh, two generations ago, your grandparents. And it can go sort of further back, back by it. So you've got a meter, I'm just walking up here, against, uh, I've got a, a uh, what is it, a uh, Dr. Zeus towel on my head because I'm so cold at the moment and my head would freeze off. Here's someone coming back uh, from the station. Uh, yeah, so uh, you've got that meter and uh, that meter is cut up into, g'day. 23 little stringlets uh, varying from 2 to 20 centimeters long I think little stringlets and uh, 22 is your uh, 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 code, it's the last one uh, that uh, 23rd one 
is given a letter, an X or a Y, for whether it uh, determines whether you're a male or a female. So uh, you can have a double uh, X makes you a female, and an X and a Y makes you a male. That's how it, it goes up. And so that uh, those strings. So uh, now in your uh, in your nucleus or your uh, DNA is held together in a long string-like fashion. Now, uh, people are often used to seeing the uh, double, uh, uh, the X, the DNA coil up in something called chromosomes. So, so means a bunch of stuff, basically. So, uh, there's tomes and mirrors and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, that uh, X shape is at the point of where it's made a copy of itself and it's ready to split. So it started off and it's evolved and made a copy of itself. And the this copy to the left, a copy to the right. So it's a doubled, a doubled copy um, from itself. And. Uh, uh, there'll be this actual little, even though you see that it's an X, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's an X with a little staple in the centre uh, of that X holding it together. And there's guy ropes to that X. Each of those X have a little guy rope to it, which is a uh, microtubule. And uh, what happens is there's, this is absolutely true, there's animations of it. And uh, if you get upset, well, don't get upset, it's all true. Why hasn't your biology teacher t taught you this? Don't ask me, you know. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, what happens is that your that little X, which you see as a chromosome, is the uh, DNA wound up. So the DNA forms itself into a... Uh, a, uh, uh, this particular shape. Now, uh, what I now believe is that um, uh, this shape is the shape it really, it's really just before it pulls itself apart. And basically, uh, there's a uh, hook, two hooks, say on the left and the right of the cell, and a strand of rope between the side and uh, what happens is uh, that uh, when everything is ready to go um, these little robots protein robots with the two little legs start to walk along the tight ropes um, to either side so let me just try and say uh, let me try and imagine give you an imagination story so um uh, we're going to get into June Drive anyway, but I'm uh, walking all the way up to the National Park and it's about, oh, well after midnight at the moment, I'll get there. Um, but I've sort of been a bit slack recently, so I've decided I'm really going to push myself a little bit. Uh, so let's try and give you an example of what that would be, be like. Um, imagine, uh, well... Um, I'm a bit reticent to talk about you and a friend because the two have got to be pulled apart. The only difference is because the friend is a bit different from you. So imagine there is another exact clone of yourself, absolutely exact in every possible way. And uh, uh, what happens is that you're uh, stapled together. <laughs> You're held by Velcro, so to speak, so you can be pulled apart uh, about the chest. So you get your legs and uh, you're held together by the chest. And out your back is a, uh, a rope and you're in a room and uh, uh, your rope is connected to the left of the room. You've got your, your mate there. His velcro to you and his rope is connected to the right of the room. Now, uh, what happens is that uh, 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 there's uh, 
some uh, 46 pairs. You know, just as amazing. There's 23 from your mum, 23 from your dad. There's actually 46 little pairs. So that's a fair number of them. Um, all stacked up in the uh, the cell, and there's actually uh, uh, and you've copied yourself. And we'll talk about how copying yourself a bit later on. And uh, you got these ropes, and uh, so there's actually 46 little ropes going all the way up to this anchor point. And uh, at a particular point, when everything's uh, set, uh, these little robots. Uh, Dining robots, these are little feet. They're basically a little set of hips and legs. And they walk across down the uh, uh, ropes and uh, get their ropes at the same time to start tightening up. And how the ropes tighten up, there's no heaving of it. There's actually just gets munched. And so the, you can imagine the uh, I suppose uh, a, th a huge six meter long sausage and you want to slowly draw the sausage and what you have to do is you have to eat the sausage you can't let go and you've got to actually eat the sausage and what actually happens is the actual uh, proteins that make up the microtubules are called tubulin and uh, uh, this is a chemical works on them and uh, they get ripped away like Lego box we ripped away you know if you've ever done a, a tower out of Lego it's like Lego box and it's they're ripped away and so the ropes tighten and the cell these anchor points are held on either side of the nucleus of the cell and so if your DNA separates now uh, is that the the uh, time of separation uh, it, your nucleus gets absolutely chock-a-block full of uh, DNA so normally in your normal cell as it goes about its business there's two meters how many meters is there when it's about to change there's four meters of it and four meters it's all done up now the DNA when it's actually working DNA is like packed, a packed suitcase ready to go, but when it's actually on its work site, it completely uncoils. Now, you can imagine how difficult it is to coil uh, uh, DNA. You say if you, you know, if you had a, a garden hose, it would be, you know, it takes a bit to coil a garden hose and to coil and super coil your DNA. That would be quite a hard business to do, but the uh, but he's got sort of a, a unbelievable sort of trick, um, and so you imagine you had a whole heap of, um, you know, a whole a huge mangle hose. Now, to get this hose in perspective, um, in terms of thinness and length, all the DNA in your body, DNA in your body, would stretch from here to the sun and back several times. There's a huge distance of it. So it's just mind-bogglingly long to store stuff uh, in your DNA. Um, it's a pretty huge amount of information in a small, small space. But in order to get it to... Uh, I'm going to do this pretty easily, this walk. So I'm actually quite excited by this. There's a car coming past at the middle of the night. Actually warming up a bit, so I'm actually not doing so bad and you, I, my lung capacity has just gone through the roof I sort of feel like previously I said feel you know I felt, felt fantastic but now it feels as though I'm uh, basically I'm breathing through holes in my chest there's so much air you know there's a hole in my chest and I just sort of breathing so little resistance breathing getting back to it sorry mate um so uh, Imagine you've got this long hose. Uh, so first you've got the separation of the DNA, and uh, it's pretty worthwhile talking about. Um, so when the DNA is out working, it's uncoiled. In fact, your nucleus has got every section of its DNA open up. So uh, basically, it's uh, say uh, you've got an encyclopedia 
right and uh, you've got an army of busloads of people looking at the DNA and they want to look at all the ones you don't have it bound up in an encyclopedia what you do is you add every page and lay it on the floor for uh, the proteins and all the processes to walk around and simultaneously so uh, the uh, um, breaking it up into uh, 46 me lengths means that you get a, a factor of well 46 to 23 times greater speed of application because you've got to just uh, double shorter lengths so the doubling process can occur 23 times faster if you've got it broken up into 23 segments <coughs> and uh, when it's actually processing it's actually unbelievably sorry the train going past there uh, unbelievably fast so <coughs> you know how you've got a two core processor well this is every piece of information is all laid out and can operate really uh, really quickly um, and all uh, on all segments at the same time it's just you know, like, compute all of its code in absolutely massively parallel it's sort of like sort of computers spit, spit out their information in a linear sort of sentence and you listen in a linear se sort of sentence imagine uh, someone's complete thought of you know complete number of thoughts hitting you at the same time like, it's just in incomprehensibly fast uh, that DNA can operate on. And we'll talk a little bit about, more about the structure of DNA but well, let's get back into the genes. Genes are the little sections of DNA which uh, code for the protein so uh, basically uh, protein machines get pumped out by the DNA and uh, these proteins determine what the cell can do. So the DNA gets transcribed into RNA. The RNA is midway between uh, machines and information. Sometimes they're machines, sometimes they're bits of information and uh, they can actually go and stitch together the materials to make proteins. The proteins go off and actually manufacture the fats and all the other complex things and uh, also they also uh, manufacture chemically manufacture the bits which make up the DNA and the proteins and so it's sort of like a closed uh, a closed uh, loop uh, loop there uh, so we've come back to the DNA it's got all cells have to uh, basically uh, manage energy defend their system they've got to defend their territory keep a sort of environment and they've also got to eventually produce another cell so cells could do quite a, an amazing thing uh, so uh, you can imagine yourself uh, i have to um, eat get myself together and at the end of the day you close the door and open the door there's two of me and that's what happens with cells uh, with uh, no more than a bit of sugar and a bit, a bit of water. Um, they can live there for a while and pop, they form a second one of them. And that pop, the second one of them, is just before it pops, it goes into this. Uh, first thing it does is to make a second copy of the DNA, then eventually it starts to make copies of everything else to make two separate, um, separate standalone cells. This is one of the things that people um, don't. Oh, there's sort of lots of things missing in the education. So, not only does it make um, uh, two copies of uh, the nucleus, so the nucleus makes two copies of the DNA and then it pinches apart into two nucleus, but also it has to make multiple copies of uh, its organelles and shove them about the place because. Uh, as soon as it's uh, finished dividing itself, it's up and running. So it's got the actual uh, bases here. 
going going along. Get there. Oh, that was a bit weird. I suppose I am a bit weird at the moment. <clears throat> when I was first doing my uh, cardiac rehab, the the police cars would be going up, going back up and forth, checking the national park. They get to know me and check out, check on me. I don't think it's like this now. Um, okay, uh, so we've got the DNA. Perhaps you didn't know this about the structure of DNA, RNA, and uh, uh, we've got it, how it makes a copy of itself. And you know, in the background, I've got to tell you about this most terrifying uh, development where we can genetically engineer a cell to genetically engineer itself and therefore wipe out an entire species, which I think people say, well, why don't we wipe out rabbits with it? And, uh, of course, the issue is that, uh, although you may want to wipe out rabbits in Australia, you know, that would be a, a, well, I'd not say anything like that, but uh, the problem is that those rabbits, someone may take an Australian rabbit to another country, and the gene drive would go through it. This sort of complimentary thing. I I think of course why doesn't a terrorist actually get a gene drive and uh, and wipe out the human race. I, it just it's, it's something which uh, I'd have to be assured of. It seems a, a really terrifying thing. But we're getting back to a looking idea. So if you've got an idea of a, a length of stream uh, two meters long stuff and in that length of string are these tiny little bits of things called genes um, so uh, the gene is for a uh, say there would be simplistically a gene for an eye so your eye and the variations of that gene the gene for an eye the version for a blue eye would be called an allele. So an allele is actually a gene, a gene for a particular expression of a, uh, oh, a uh, particular thing. And there's two things I have to get in my memory. This is why I'm doing this. So I can get my memory here. There's genotype and phenotype. I, this of my head. Uh, that's an expression. Um, I think a phenotype is what's observed blue eyes and the genotype is the actual uh, genes which actually promote that phenotype but let's talk about the genes so genes um, in the text or firstly I want to talk about the um, coiling and uncoiling um, so unlike your garden hose where it's coiled in a big circle there's these magic yo-yos I'm not joking Go and look, I think they're called nucleosomes. The nucleosomes, the magic yo yo's, billions of magic yo yo's get poured into the cell at a particular point in time. And then each piece of DNA says yo and starts to coil around. It does two loops around the yo yo, there's a little strength and it loops around the opposite way. And so, with no time, uh, you get this rope and it naturally coils itself out like at very high speed. So you can imagine two meters outside will take a long time to coil. They put out these magic yo-yos and the entire thing coils up instantly because each little section does a little bit of coiling. So it's parallel coils at a mad blazing speed and uh, so while this coiling is going on it's dividing this, the axis to the DNA is off and um, it's important that you know the X. Now, when the DNA is not uh, not in functioning place, it's like uh, your bedroom. Yeah, like it's this mess everywhere. It's a really messy stuff. Now, the DNA itself, um, well, how come it doesn't get tangled? It's a long string. String tangles, you know? How come your DNA doesn't tie itself in a, a knot? Or... So I've got 23 sections, or 46 bits of DNA. What stops that DNA getting completely tangled? Nightmare. 
it got more than 46 hairs, but it would get tangled, wouldn't it? And well, uh, DNA is pretty special in terms of the actual molecular repulsion, and uh, it actually uh, doesn't like each other. It wants to spring out into a long strands, um, and so it's called in the uh, uh, the uh, was it the nucleus? It's actually repelled from each other. So there's a, a bit of a gap between each piece of DNA, and then there's ends of the DNA which are repelled, and so the actual bits of DNA, if you put one piece of DNA in an area of another piece of DNA, you know, one chromosome, chromosome 24, and the other chromosome 18 and chromosome 8 together, and they get a bit tangled, the actual repulsion will actually mean that the actual uh, DNA A, DNA 8, which you've got uh, in the chromosome 8, which is sort of wormed its way into the middle of a big patch of uh, DNA 18, for instance, the repulsion will actually worm that piece of DNA out and will eject itself off. And so uh, your nucleus is actually divided into uh, little zones and regions of pure chromosomes. So, you know, it's pretty mad how it, how it is. How do you know this? Well, um, people are pretty clever and they can actually put... Uh, I, look, I don't quite know how they do it, but they put uh, different glowy bits on different bits of the DNA, and they can actually uh, get your nucleus to actually glow like anything. Look, I am doing this walk. I am so much fitter now. I'm doing this walk with no worry whatsoever. I don't know if you've, people have kept me, kept listening to the podcast. I doubt there'll be anyone. I don't know how long you could list, bother listening to one of these podcasts before you say, it looks enough, enough. I want to hear this Aussie guy talking on and on. Um, but uh, it's uh, completely different. Uh, my uh, Now I've sort of walked, walked this distance with no effort whatsoever. Oh, like I'm feeling fantastic. It's great. Okay, so you, your DNA is all, all spread out and it's got little segments on it which are genes. I'm not going to tell you how the genes are with the actual structure of the DNA, but there's little sections that you could get your highlighter on and mark it. But um, what you have to do is you need at least, oh, I don't know, four different highlighters. The first bit of highlighter you put in your DNA, I'm doing this as a little bit of teaching technique because it, will, it accesses the activity in your brain and so as I talk about it, um, you remember it. So your first highlighter, you highlight a little section of it. And that section is the actual uh, switch to, say, put that DNA on. And so what will happen is a molecule will come up and say, uh, I'm a request for such and such a protein. Okay, so it goes into your DNA, checks along, Yep, here it is. Um, I'd like six of those, mate. And uh, it's not quite like that. But this protein, which may come in, so say if you, uh, oh, I don't know, need a particular chemical, your brain will say, well, liver, make some insulin, or insulin, make something or other like that. That'll go into these cells, and uh, this protein will actually go to your DNA. Tap it on the shoulder and it says, yeah, yeah. And so this is the first section of the DNA. So the first little section in front of your protein is the switch which activates the gene, which says, yep, we want a few copies of that. Otherwise, it will just be copies of the molecules, DNA molecules will be coming out hither and yon. And um, this, the DNA is really efficient. Um, so it's got the switch section. Put that uh, marker pen away, get another marker pen, and uh, I want you to mark out a section of DNA in which the gene is going to be involved. And there are the stop and start codes, Just put them stop and start, and, here, and so put that marker pen away. Then, it's not just clean sailing, it's not just one section codes for one molecule, it is... Uh, Introns and exons. So exons, I believe, are the 
coding bit and the uh, code for a protein and introns just sort of junk with it actually within a gene and so what happens is um, these massive protein machines you can imagine sort of like a compared to the DNA these are huge things with little uh, I suppose little feet to little motors inside them yep these are proteins these are machines they've got little motors inside them I'm going to turn around here walk I'm not going to go down the uh, although I'm feeling really fantastic I think I, should, I could be able to do this walk down you can walk down to the canyon from here but I'm going to turn around yeah so these little machines all right so imagine a a string well one of these machines I oh, kid you not you click on the machine and it just runs through the machine it runs along the string it's like the cells are pretty much actually the machines are almost alive i.e. that they have a process that they operate using up cell food this is ATP and uh, when they click on they they don't don't muck around so you can imagine <coughs> we've got say uh, a cord to your uh, oh I don't know no, I'm going to give you a uh, impression it's going to upset you because I know people get upset when their garden hose breaks um, but uh, imagine you open up for Christmas this uh, packet that's got this little, like a little machine with little wheels on it and stuff like that and yeah, it says put on your garden hose and you go outside you put on your garden hose and, wow it goes along your garden hose really fast it's got a little motor on it and it moves it clicks on your garden hose goes along really fast and then you read the instructions but warning it will cut at six meters oh my god it's cut it in six meters well, that's not that quite what it necessarily do but the, uh, uh, what it does is uh, is a little uh, machine enzyme goes along your DNA winding it up and uh, goes along and it goes stop start code and what it does is it, once it's at the start code it says right opens it up and builds a copy of your DNA and RNA copy now remember that I said before the RNA uh, does a messaging for how to make proteins which are the machines that it's involved in, and also uh, oh sorry um, also they're making the proteins but also uh, um, the messenger the transport and then there's the G RNA so there's different types of RNA there's the mechanical it's the R RNA the ribosomal RNA, I've probably got a different name for it, mRNA, which is the messenger, which is the template to go and make a protein with transport RNA. Oh, these little mini floating machines that float around the cell picking up um, protein amino acids and going in and actually locking into these machines. It's, it's blinding uh, what it can do. So look, if you uh, I don't know. You can be. A, I should imagine you could be upset in two ways. I myself am not upset by this. I just began reading this, and I just couldn't put a book down in the 1980s when I read it. I just went, for goodness' sake, how can this operate? And I, there's still issues I still don't understand, but um, uh, this is really interesting phenomenon. You show kids the actual little mini robots walking up around the cell they love it but you show older people they say they start to criticize so when people go off and say oh Boston University what would they know the Viz lab that's probably not true it's only a theory except well it's not a theory it's very well known um, so uh, you got these machines which go along and uh, they zip it and they actually throw off uh, strips of RNA. Now some of those strips of RNA will fold up into being uh, intermediate machines or some of them will be fold up to be uh, um, uh, sorry uh, they'll fold up to be templates which feed into these mini machines which make the proteins 
which make up the cell. And so it's a sort of fairly complicated thing. Uh, you you point it around what the various things look like that car's doing. It's a locked gate up there, so I don't know why they're doing it. They've locked up all the gates at night, so you can't just drive a hoon round the the National Park at night. Um, unless, unless you're in there. Um, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, so you've marked that section between the start and the stop, and uh, this uh, uh, little machine will hoon along, and uh, it will produce a segment of uh, RNA, and uh, the RNA would be a disaster if it got out. So what happens is that somehow, and I'm not sure how this, how it works it out, that there's other, other codes in the DNA to tell that the exon has stopped and the intron has started. And it just casts off the um, the intron bits and, and welds together the extron bits. So you've got your gene. So uh, it's basically uh, like. Uh, uh, I don't know. You've got you're reading along this code, and you suddenly read, and suddenly uh, different letters. Uh, something which is going to be go to the shop, but in amongst that word go to the shop are other words stuck together, and so you know this is an important message. You get this other go telegraph to pajamas. Um, the spaghetti shop and somehow it goes through and actually rips those other unknown words together and sticks it together in a sentence so your RNA sentence goes off into the protein translator cells well that's the, the body and I have a few I suppose a few questions I have um, now I don't know um, if I ask questions it's either I either find out uh, that uh, I don't know. I'm stupid. This is one of the one of the outcomes, or we haven't thought of that. Um, so inside your you've got your nucle your uh, nuclear membrane. So this is a, inside your cell is even a small little cell, and inside that nucleus is all your DNA. It's all sprung out. Oh, most of the time, occasionally, if you look inside, it's family photo time uh, where it's all stringing up ready to go but most of the time it's all hanging loose and little things and in some works there are uh, these pretty chunky enzymes going around and um, uh, somehow uh, those enzymes have to get inside the cell so um, and the chemicals have to get inside the uh, so the chemicals have to go through to activate or have to actually get in these these big chunky things now it's sort of like um, I don't know uh, the pores the pores in the outside of the uh, nucleus are pretty small they're only small enough to let the uh, RNA slip in and out or out I suppose so the RNA gets produced and you can imagine that uh, also it's got to have uh, bits of uh, other stuff, the nucleic acids and uh, various things, the uh, uh, base pairs, so uh, you've got your uh, uh, ACGT uh, bases, but the bases have to be hooked to a sugar and a phosphate. There's a sugar and phosphate backbone here. So they've got to get into the cell, but also, so into the nucleus, also my question is, um, you've got this house with these tiny little doors in it that sort of only you could open the door and fit as a, like a garden gnome in. And you have to shove it inside there. And you listen inside and you hear this grill noise and you open it up, you look at the windows. Somehow grillers have got into the, these big um, enzymes which roar up and do all these fantastic things they're really big how did they actually get in there do they all crowd in at the uh, the uh, division times can they, i mean their cells 
which live a very, very long time. Yes. So your brain cells live as long as you do. Yeah, they, you, they build up and they don't go. Uh, so how, 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 do, how do those big enzymes get in there? Because there's no little door for it. It's sort of, a, for me, a, one of the mysteries. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I think the older I get, the less time people have to uh, speak to me to explain it. So the, you you got all this uh, uh, this information now. Uh, uh, one of the uh, important things is you've all heard about the double helix. So um, in order to go along the DNA, read the DNA, these uh, enzyme molecules have to rotate at blinding speed. So it's like a corkscrew; they have to just rotate around at incredible speed. And uh, you've got uh, two strands, a lead and a lag strand. You've got, it goes from three to five or uh, three prime. The lag um, strand is de designated by uh, a prime, which is like a little dash, like an apostrophe. Um, uh, why it's three and five, I don't know, but it, uh, it says in the direction that the... DNA is, and um, it's got to do all sorts of geometric tricks to work. It's like the coiling, coiling, you, you get a piece of string, you work out coil, no, it's got this magic yo-yo, billions of magic yo-yos which coil up at a very fast rate. You, uh, look, if you don't believe me, go and look at it, and uh, don't spend much time. I'd, Look, there's very few animations which have come up yet, which really capture capture this. I think there's an animation of uh, an Australian in um, called Drew. He gave a TED talk. Love TED talks, but they they are people like to make the talk last a very long time. You you're listening and you just go, oh God, tell me the answer. Uh, look, I understand everything you said. Tell us the answer, and the Wait, and go, oh, it's the last 30 seconds. Oh, that's a conclusion. But look, his TED Talk is absolutely fantastic. Drew, something or other. Memory's not quite there yet. Um, so, uh, what well, I'm talking about this uh, copying itself, the DNA making a copy of itself, is something to behold because what it has to do is it can copy, basically, when it makes a copy, it's got to uh, put. Uh, open up the lead strand uh, and make a copied a template lag strand which could fit into it and the lag strand it's got to go over and the lag strand would, would want to go in the opposite direction so what it does is it produces a small quantity in the opposite opposite direction which is the right direction of the lag strand just bear with me and it's these it's does it throws off these loops which it reconnects all the time, and then, uh, yeah, it's enough to make you go completely mad watching it. And of course, uh, that's impossible. I would make so many mistakes. So, it's got an en another enzyme going up at, at making, um, making, uh, mist uh, sort of making uh, ch error checking and repairing it as you go along. It's sort of just incredible. Now, um, there's. Uh, the knee breaks all the time, so it's got a repair mechanism. And essentially, uh, uh, and this might gross you out, but uh, your uh, every time you make a sperm or an egg, or women make the eggs, or yeah, I'm sure they're babies, but men keep on going making eggs of oh, sperm, sorry mate, and uh, the sperm, bear in mind the DNA is repulsive, so the sperm, the DNA in your uh, sperm is actually, comp you know, sperm is a really tiny cell, and the DNA is actually compressed into it, because, you know, the entire idea is to get, the, make the DNA as small as possible, so it creates less drag, uh, you've got the sperm got to swim, and you can have this uh, big Oh, look at my, yeah, I've got all this DNA, really big. So it's going to compress that DNA. And so, I, you know, that DNA is pretty inactive in the sperm's head. Um, and there's all these other factors. I, I find the 
the, the entire comp uh, it's been a bit difficult to, co to comprehend the complexity of them and all that um, uh, sorry uh, uh, that that aspect uh, aspect of them um yeah, I've actually forgotten thinking about sperms. Actually, made made me forget uh, a little. Oh yeah, look. Um, so the making of the sperm uh, will gross you out. So uh, essentially, a sperm rather than having forty six, um, it's only got twenty three, and it says, um, well, it. Uh, Makes uh, two sets of Frankenstein's. When I say Frankenstein's, you will not believe believe this. So um, it's uh, it's got uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, two sets of uh, sorry, two sets of, of Frankenstein's. Now, how it happens is that uh, your uh, each cell in you has a mum, has is made, got a contribution of your mum, and I uh, think you want to use your mum because mums are more reliable. It's just in jest, and a backup of your dad. And so you've got, you've got, and what you can use it the backup for is when one gets sandwiched, it can actually read the other one to get a rough idea of what's, what it's doing. But when uh, it goes to make a sperm, uh, you uh, get your mum, you double her, and you get your dad actually inside your cell. So this will gross you out, and uh, your dad, dad's copy, gets put on top of it. And then your dad lies on top of your mum, and then what happens is this pretty amazing stuff. Uh, little things go and uh, do does a precision uh, cut. Um, now, yeah, I need to know how this happens a bit more. It's a precision cut, uh, say in your arm, in the different arms and legs, and it cuts through your dad, lying on top of your mum, and uh, they, they don't feel anything, but. And then what happens is that you've got a little bit of limb hang, you know, hanging off by a thread. And what happens is it twists and you're, and then they sew back on and uh, uh, you can, yes for the sake, your, your mum's wearing stockings and high heels so you can see where it's come from and your dad's, I don't know, wearing a dinner jacket and cufflinks and all that type of stuff and uh, out walks out after this process walks out you've got a hybrid of your mum and your dad now I, i've actually translated that into your physical mum dad but it's actually just the genetic thing but i've actually possibly grossed you out so there's this uh, cutting and uh, uh, going across and uh, obviously this is uh, Okay, obviously if you cut crudely in the middle of a gene, it might survive if you if the introns lay, lay up. If your exons, it hits an exon, it, it might go as well. In fact, uh, this process of uh, operation, has a, I think in humans, is three, three out of every uh, um, four. Uh, wind up in a miscarriage. It's a pretty, pretty brutal, crude, crude way of doing it. And so, uh, uh, you got your DNA. I, I actually, I'm not even actually going on the actual double strandness, but the double strandness is pretty amazing because you can do one nick and a second nick, or one nick on one strand and one nick on the other strand, and actually twist the two around each other, and then. Uh, Nick it a second time to actually transfer it. You know, to tra it's an amazing thing to watch. The entire thing is thank goodness for computer visualization of it. So I'm doing no good a job um, podcasting on it. Uh, but the important thing here is, uh, yeah, okay. 
people, oh, I can't, these, these people are ignoring me at night. So I'm getting back home. Uh, the important part here is that uh, uh, DNA can be hacked. And what do you hack things with? Viruses. And this is why you call computer virus. You can actually put in the DNA a message for uh, please make me some, I don't know, some keratin. What do you have in your hair? Make it. Is it keratin in your hair somewhere? I've got the protein. So my hair looks absolutely beautiful. And uh, all this type of stuff. And then uh, you can actually put in, please make another copy of my virus. What? I didn't say that. Oh, oh here is, oh, I've set it high, at, at high speed. And so before you know it, your cell is absolutely full of viruses. And please make it a copy of my virus to sit in a container, a spaceship container to go out into the world and infect other people. And uh, so that's what a virus does. It's a virus is a rogue piece of DNA coming into the place. And uh, uh, way before we were even thought of as uh, nucleic cells, there were bacteria for millions of years. And these bacteria would have to do battle with the viruses. And the viruses weren't just you know, oh, I think I'll stick on a doorknob. Doorknobs have been invented back many years ago. In fact, um, uh, <coughs> say if you had a virus in a bucket of water, sorry, bacteria in a bucket of water, the virus would have to actually find its way to the bacteria because, you know, the virus is pretty small, the bacteria is pretty small, the bucket of water is huge. Um, so the bacteria could probably live its life quite happily, virus not finding it. So the viruses have uh, uh, lived in these little spaceships. I am not joking. Look up bacteria flages. They live in these little uh, spaceships with these high tech uh, capsules on the top of them, and uh, this is little landing feet, and these little landing feet tuned for their host bacteria and they go out and seek bacteria uh, so they float around and uh, uh, they get quite chemically attracted to the bacteria they land on the bacteria and uh, when they settle on the bacteria their feet lock down and uh, you know encounters of the third kind that type of thing where the, the bottom of the spaceship goes down the bottom of the spaceship goes down, penetrates the cell and um, injects the rogue DNA into the cell and the cells saying, what do you want, what, oh, oh here's another order. It's sort of like um, at a pizza shop, uh, or sorry, at a hamburger shop, the uh, cell receives all these orders and they say, all right, there's six hamburgers there's a, and someone's ordered a hand grenade. They've ordered 60 hand grenades. All right, we better get on working on those, and uh, it wouldn't know what was going on. So, over the years, the bacteria have uh, come up with a solution for this, and that is uh, basically a wanted notice that it actually has inside its uh, DNA. So it has various wanted. Anything with this piece of DNA go out and destroy. Or how does it do it? Well, the DNA uses these big cutting machines <coughs> and uh, enzymes, which I've described, going up. And uh, 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 this particular cutting machine we're going to talk about is Cas9. I think this is a Cas11. Cas is for any enzyme it gets a, a little code for it. And uh, these cutting machines are built, and uh, what happens is the cutting machine goes along, picks up something which is called a guard RNA, which is an identity kit. You know, you imagine, you know, if you yank police going around, we're looking for uh, a white, uh, I just want to think, a, uh, oh, I can say a white male, but I can say a black male, a <laughs> black male with a big, two large, big ears a long nose with a little black spot on it, um, and a tail, 
and big shoes yep and uh, wears shorts and a little uh, uh, a little uh, uh, what's it those straps you wear braces and stuff like that and speaks in a squeaky voice right we want to we, we want to actually arrest one of those um, uh, those people and uh, so this Cas9 gets a description and in this case I've decided that it's going to go out and eliminate any Mickey Mouse which is around the place but it uses this description and this molecule goes up to any piece of DNA and basically blows it out of the water but actually roots it. It can either cut it in half or it basically just snips it. So your virus is going along and uh, all of a sudden it's got to encounter these enzymes which are designed to cut them. And so that, that sort of stops the viruses dead in their tracks. And just as well, because the only thing on earth would be viruses, so the bacteria survived with this technique. And so this is the entire thing of CRISPR engineering. The, uh, they dis discovered the code bacteria is used to put their uh, most wanted posters in it. Their most wanted posters is in black and white. They take an image of it, and the image slips into these chomper molecules, these Cas9s. So you've got a Cas9 and the guide, something called guide RNA. It's about 20, 20 long and it uses this to uh, look and hunt for viruses. Now this is uh, a virus uh, doesn't have all the machinery to repair itself. So that's okay. Um, so what we do is that uh, we say we can give it a piece of guide RNA and get it to chomp one of our uh, one of our uh, uh, DNA, so we can actually silence a gene, turn off a gene. So most recently, you use CRISPR to turn off a, a gene to uh, make cow horns grow. So they now have made a, a new species of cow, which you no longer have to dehorn. That means that the person can sit in, sit in without this horrible dehorning you have to do. That's just one, one, one terrifying example using this uh, uh, virus warfare machine of bacteria and now we can harness it. So uh, uh, you can get big bottles of this Cas9 and uh, you can on the internet order big bottles of the uh, uh, gene uh, guide RNA, G RNA. Uh, two squirt bottles. You squirt it on your uh, cell and it sort of goes to work and you can genetic engineer on a tabletop. Yeah. You know, what are we having today? Well, I'm just going to genetically modify all my food before I actually eat it. I bought it. Naturally, I, I only eat genetically modified food, so you can get these two uh, two squirt bottles. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but not much more complicated. It suddenly has uh, taken, um, if you can imagine, uh, genetic engineering was basically each was a moonshot, and now uh, it's sort of like a, uh, a drone kit you can buy it. Uh, RS or Tandy, I wonder if you've got those stores in the US. It's sort of like a hobby stuff. You go into Toys R Us and they've got do your own genetic kits. So it's getting to quite towards that end and it's it's a mad, mad world out there. So uh what can you do? Um you've got this process that can actually go in and you can tell here's a piece of DNA cut there piece of guard RNA. So what can you do? Well you can insert into that DNA a new piece of DNA and some bright spark has said okay now what you do is and, and what it does is that uh, when it's cut it's it goes around scrambles like mad reads the code a bit up reads the code a bit down finds an example and actually patches it up, usually with a backup copy. But what you can do is provide a backup copy which says, uh, I don't know, the quick 
brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So it's you cut a quick brown, and then the next piece is the lazy dog, or uh, lazy jo- dogs, and it goes over and it says that this is missing, and it picks up a bit, which starts quick brown and lazy dog, and just whacks it in and hopes it's okay. So you can actually trigger it by having uh, the quick brown uh, Cas9 molecule, guide protein, and sinister new gene, lazy dog. And so what happens is that you have a, a, a piece of DNA saying the quick brown box jumps over the lazy dog, snip in the center, and here's your local repair. Oh, it's repaired the quick brown box, Cas9, uh, the guide RNA, and a protein and a, a genetic code, which means that you find cold, low temperature, completely toxic, and you will die. Okay, so it's, something's all okay, except. Uh, when there's a cold snap, the entire population will die because what happens is it's now got a piece of DNA which pumps out pretty regularly a uh, code to uh, insert another another drive. It keeps on making its own drive genes. It actually keeps on copying itself insanely. It's sort of like CRISPR on steroids. So it does that, and uh, what that happens is that this will mean that uh, it actually, you genetically program it with the genetic machinery to program it. And so what it means is that uh, this uh, will go in um, and convert everything. So all your offspring will have this, and all your offspring will have genetic information which then... Uh, eliminates so say you've got uh, this you both your mother and father have now got this put in you and when you mate uh, your child will not have a chance because uh, that it's a gene drive it's it's a gene with a driver on it it's a gene with I'm going to take over the entire species so you can actually put a gene right throughout a species. So, and so that, like, that's sort of like this uh, uh, male system. So let's put it in game. So you can edit and insert a gene. So uh, with this um, CRISPR thing, oh, so, yeah, CRISPR, CRISPR uh, thing, you can edit a gene and put anything you want. So. What I'm going to put in here is a gene editing kit and the gene I want to put in. So not just the gene, but you put the gene and the gene editing kit inside. And of course, uh, this means that uh, once it's done doing one bit, we'll go off and do the next the next gene into it, and then it will be given into the next generation of a gene editing kit. You can actually put into a gene into the DNA gene editing and uh, you can uh, basically wipe out a species if you wanted to. So this is uh, oh, for me terrifying. So look I've got uh, possibly six or oh, five, probably six, six basic questions where I say okay well that's there. How does that get there? So, an example is you got these monster um, proteins operating inside your hermetically sealed uh, nucleus. How do those proteins, how do those uh, enzymes get inside the nucleus? Because they're uh, only, uh, only small pores in there. So, how, how does that all work? And, um, uh, do those proteins actually get built inside the nucleus? Is there a bit of uh, a world within a world? Does the nucleus have its own protein production facility so it can't fold 
Yeah, I just can't, I can't. I would assume that their their uh, proteins are made out, outside, and they're put in little uh, 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 not vacuoles. This is a little internal transport sacks, and just to get get yourself fully aware of how sophisticated cells are. Um, uh, a cell can make a protein, put it in a sack, give it an address, and it will walk that that protein to the required section of the cell. So perhaps there is this uh, mechanism in which uh, proteins, uh, sorry, these uh, enzymes can be bundled up in a V, something rather, not vacuole, v vesicule. There you go. This is my memory coming back. A vesicule. And so these vesicules uh, basically float there, hook up with a pair of legs, and the uh, pair of legs walk along uh, these microtubules. Now, again, look, this is insane. Uh, there's a pair of legs which can only walk in one direction on a tubules, and so uh, I don't. So you can have up walking legs and down walking legs for tubules, these microtubules, but somehow it all works. Um, so, uh, so I've got the issues about that. Um, I can't see myself. So I hope I've explained how gene drives have have grown as I've done this long, long walk. And hopefully you can hear me getting a bit better. And um, you can see that I have these uh, fundamental questions. Um, what I, what I do find is that. Uh, uh, some people are really agitated uh, when you start discussing these sorts of things, and they they miss miss some points about the uh, or genetic applications or people visiting or people talking. They just really shut down. They don't like it whatsoever. Um, clearly, you might be in that chance by and by if you've actually survived listening to this podcast this far. You're probably just open and curious, like I am. Well, that's skeptical and worried at the same time. Uh, like it's a great opportunity. We can fix up a few genetic diseases. People are attending to really jumped on the thalassemia. Thalassemia is a one-letter code, and there's uh, this is in your blood. Uh, so what happens is this one-letter code difference and you get a different amino acid uh, put in your protein now uh, which makes up your blood and uh, that means that the actual protein uh, doesn't uh, uh, the, the protein which holds your hemoglobin if you've got this uh, doesn't form your, your neat hold of your protein. So I think the hemoglobin is still the same, held in the same. So the hemoglobin has to be uh, uh, a the, the heme molecule sits on a little cradle with another nitrogen bond underneath it. I think that's okay. The actual holding of the heme molecules are okay. But how the actual protein itself folds up and interlocks it doesn't work it. And so your actual um, your Heme molecule holds a whole lot of heme. Oh, so your hemoglobin holds a whole lot of heme molecules. So uh, your hemoglobin will have a lot, whole lot of heme molecules, and these uh, the heme molecules, uh, this big flat, really beautiful molecule with uh, four nitrogens in this sort of web, and the four nitrogens go with a fifth nitrogen underneath holds the iron and uh, that's all okay. The, he the heme molecule is okay. The hemoglobin molecule which is the big uh, package has a, uh, a, a wrong protein and so it doesn't hook up and so uh, uh, the, the heme molecules aren't correct. Now how this means that the actual red blood cell becomes sickle shaped I really don't know. I don't know that. Look, there's heaps of things I don't know. But uh, this is a single letter mistranslation. So you could uh, send in uh, CRISPR and eliminate 
that genetics defect. Um, I've got a whole lot of ethical problems like that because uh, we're, we've survived, what, I don't know, 200,000 years, you know, a fair amount of time. Uh, what seems the rush uh, to, to, to fix it? Um, I'd be also very wary of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, wiping out any life form. Um, it just really, really, uh, it just doesn't feel right. It's just that, uh, I don't know, you go in life, you start off hating these people when you first get there, and then you realise that that person you hate is actually good for you in the end. So socially, I think people operate on a social crisper, and uh, the people who operate on social crisper don't have as broad, broad lives. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, I just think the planet's going to be pretty boring. Uh, or be, it would be fantastic to get rid of cane toads and things like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's almost too quick and too easy a solution. I, the uh, rate of genetic research is uh, fantastic, fantastically fast. And I think it's, it's actually uh, something we really should teach at school. And uh, teaching people really old... DNA stuff, um, especially when you uh, read in one of the textbooks. In future, they'll be, they've been doing that for what, 15 years. They've perfected and moved over. So sort of the uh, what well, they say they're going to be doing in future in some of the textbooks, they've already been doing for a, a fair amount of time. And uh, it seems that uh, uh, people are just uh, it's the cats out of the bag. Is that right? The cat's out, the, it's out of the bag. It's running over. There's people doing these uh, experiments on human embryos with CRISPR and um, these uh, some ethicists who... Yeah, that's what their job description is. But... Um, and they're pretty convinced that they can talk about ethics... But are they actually, when it comes down to ethical? So I'll have all these uh, reservations. But uh, this, this includes stuff walking all the way back uh, to my home. And uh, thanks for being with me. And uh, hopefully my voice, coherence, interest is increasing. And hopefully... I can develop a speaking and description and eventually when I do get, if I ever get back into the classroom, uh, so the, the idea is uh, uh, making it very difficult in terms of, uh, I suppose, uh, rehab, welcoming any support to get back in and uh, so my instinct is to uh, train like crazy and sort of develop my skills outside um, because part of the negative framework is a negative outcome it's sort of the, the uh, setting up for negative outcomes so I sort of know that instinctively so that's why I've, I've instinctively trained thanks for listening another story comes to a close. It's been a pleasure sharing this moment in time with you. May you discover truly amazing things, understand them and tell others. Thanks for listening.